In this podcast I'm going to talk to you about injections in the foot and ankle which can be performed in primary care. This is not intended to be a full instructional course but merely as a guide to give pointers to those who are already giving injections. Uh, I suggest that those who have no experience of injections to go to a suitable clinic where they can learn in a practical setting. Why do we give injections? Well there are two reasons. One is diagnostic. By giving an injection of local anaesthetic, it's possible for us to determine the diagnosis or determine where pain may be arising from. And the second is therapeutic. By giving steroid uh, in the injection, we're hoping that we might be able to either cure the patient or relieve their symptoms for a significant period of time. Quite often, the purpose of the injection is twofold. It's diagnostic and therapeutic because we use a mixture of local anaesthetic and steroid. Those of you who inject the knee and the shoulder joint will know that you can inject quite a considerable volume into those joints without causing the patient too much discomfort. Because the joints in the foot and ankle are much smaller, that means that the volume that you're going to inject is a lot less. And if you try to inject the same volumes that you would inject into a knee, you could end up causing the patient some pain. I use Kenalog, which is more efficacious than Depomedrone, and 40 milligrams of this is uh, contained in one milliliter. I also use Marcane or Lignocaine, and you must tailor the amount of local anaesthetic to the joint that you're going to inject. There are several conditions which are amenable to injection. Morton's uroma, plantar fasciitis, pain arising from a joint, whether it be from osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis or pseudogout, and in exceptional circumstances, tarsal tunnel syndrome. What you shouldn't be injecting is a tendon or anywhere around a tendon in primary care. This is because if you inject around a degenerate tendon, there is a risk that that tendon may rupture. You shouldn't inject into the fat, the plantar fat pad underneath the heel, as there's a risk of irreversible fat necrosis, which can cause the patient lifelong pain. The midfoot joints and the subtalar joints are difficult joints to inject. In secondary care, we generally use an image intensifier, which is a type of x-ray machine in the operating theatre, because these joints are so hard to reach. It shouldn't be something that is attempted in primary care. If there's any area that's infected, you certainly should be injecting into a joint or injecting any steroid. If the diagnosis is really not very clear, then the injection may not actually have any purpose and all it may do is mask the diagnosis. If there's a soft tissue mass, then this patient needs to be investigated adequately uh, and again, an injection may just mask symptoms and delay a diagnosis. A Morton's stroma is not technically a neuroma. It's actually caused by uh, pain arising from uh, one of the nerves which run between the metatarsals and the foot. It's most likely caused by compression of the nerve in a similar way that carpal tunnel syndrome is caused by compression of the medial nerve. It's often associated with high areas of pressure underneath the metatarsals and the intermetatarsal ligament. Patients complain of pain which is worse in tight shoes and high heels and it feels better when they're wearing trainers or they're barefoot. The pain may radiate into their toes and be associated with pins and needles, or it may radiate more proximally. It's associated with weight bearing. When I inject, there are two places that I generally inject. Patients often find good symptomatic relief when an injection is given around the web space, but it's worthwhile to inject at the site of compression which is in between the metatarsal heads. I think that it's something that's worth doing in primary care if you feel that meta- uh, Morton's uroma is the diagnosis. I inject from the dorsum going straight down in between the metatarsal necks and head and go as far as hitting the plantar skin but don't pierce this. Withdraw a little bit and aspirate. If there's no blood aspirated, then give a test injection of a very small amount. If there's pain radiating into the toes, then it's possible that you're actually inside the nerve itself, in which case you should withdraw 
and give it another test injection. If you can inject and there's no pain radiating into the toes, then you can give three or four mils in this area. I generally give one, uh, make one uh, puncture with the needle here, uh, inject three or four mils, and withdraw slightly and angle forwards into the web space where I inject some more. Plantar fasciitis is not a single diagnosis, it's a very vague term which describes pain at the posterior end of the medial longitudinal arch. Typically patients complain of ho uh, hobbling when they get out of bed in the morning and an inability to get their heels down to the ground. After 15 or 20 minutes they find that they're able to get their foot flat down to the ground again but then they suffer heel pain uh, underneath their foot which deteriorates over the day as they're on their feet. Typically the pain is worse at the back of the medial longitudinal arch. You may receive x-ray reports that state that there are heel spurs. Unfortunately these have nothing to do with plantar fasciitis. What you may find associated with plantar fasciitis is a positive silver skills test. This is a test to look for a tightness of the gastrocnemius and the way this can be determined is by seeing how much dorsiflexion of the ankle is possible with the knee straight when the gastrocnemius is uh, tense and with the knee bent when the gastrocnemius is relaxed. If there's more dorsiflexion of the ankle possible with the knee bent then that means that the gastrocnemius is tight and limiting dorsiflexion of the ankle. This is frequently associated with plantar fasciitis. This is why plantar fasciitis in, uh, should really be treated with uh, exercise in the first instance. In this picture the heel is here, the patient is lying supine and the forefoot is in this area over here. You can see a slightly puffy region here which is where the patient is, has been complaining of pain. Exercises are far more benefit uh, than uh, injections and I don't give injections within the first three months unless the patient is disabled by pain but I always advise them to do exercises too. There's a video that I've created on YouTube uh, which you can look at in order to demonstrate to patients the correct way to perform their exercises. If you're going to inject then find the most tender spot to inject by palpating in various areas around the, the tender spot and that the most tender spot instead of just giving one injection pepper pot the injection introduce the needle go down as far as bone and then withdraw and you'll feel you're in some kind of grisly tissue inject a little bit and then move the needle in a slightly different direction aspirate and inject and move around in various directions aspirating and injection injecting all around the tender spot never inject into the heel itself because if you inject steroid into the fat of the plantar fat pad this can cause irreversible fat necrosis joint pain is it's possible to inject uh, joints of the foot and ankle in order to uh, relieve pain and uh, ascertain exactly which joint is causing the pain there are only two joints which are really accessible. One is the metatarsophalangeal joint of the great toe and the second is the ankle joint. The rest of them are very small joints and injection can cause a lot of pain. Unfortunately joint injections may not be diagnostic because some uh, joints are connected such as the ankle and subtalar joint and injecting one joint may inadvertently relieve pain in another joint where the pain actually may be arising from. If you're going to inject into the ankle joint, you need to use an aseptic technique. Feel the medial malleolus, feel the tibialis anterior, feel the joint line. Introduce the needle between the medial malleolus and the tibialis anterior and inject going backwards slightly and laterally. When you feel that you're in the joint, aspirate uh, to make sure you're not in a blood vessel and then give a small test injection. If it goes in easily, then carry on injecting. If you find that there's a lot of resistance, then withdraw the needle slightly, as it may be that you're in cartilage. If you're going to inject the big toe, you'll need an assistant, because unless you have distracted the toe, it's very difficult to get the needle into the joint. You need to pull on the toe, 
and you'll be able to feel a sulcus opening up as you distract the toe joint. Introduce the needle into the sulcus and then aspirate it. If there's no blood, then give a small test injection. If there's a lot of in, uh, resistance, then you may need to withdraw slightly because you may be in the cartilage. If you find it difficult to get into the joint, this may be because there are osteophytes. And if there are large osteophytes, then it may not just be impossible to get into the joint, but it also may be too late and injections may not be the appropriate treatment for this degree of wear and tear arthritis. The tarsal tunnel is something that in theory could be injected, but uh, is something that is very rarely done and I wouldn't really recommend it in primary care. And the reason is you need to be particularly sure about your diagnosis. You need to know what's causing the tarsal tunnel syndrome. Nerve conduction studies will show if there's compression of the nerve and imaging such as an MRI scan will tell you if there's a soft tissue mass that needs to be treated. The patient needs to be on their side, feel the medial malleolus, feel the tibialis posterior tendon below this, perform a Tonell's test by tapping on the nerve to locate where the nerve pain uh, uh, appears to be arising from. Start from proximally and above and aim downwards about 30 degrees to the skin surface, aiming along the line of the uh, nerve and uh, aspirate before injecting. If you feel, if the patient feels pain, then that means that you may be in the nerve, in which case you need to withdraw slightly and give another test injection. Thank you for watching this podcast. If you want further information on foot and ankle surgery, you can go to my website at www.manchesterfootsurgeon.co.uk.